Hey everybody, welcome to another podcast, Trade Genius. Bob here, my good friend Phil with me. Everybody's waiting for Santa to show up in the stock market, but we're going to see the Grinch first. Let us explain. Trade Genius. Okay, Phil, people are really confused now. I didn't know Christmas started on November 1st, okay? And and it goes now, apparently it goes now to the end of the year. But we had an awesome November, you know, for the markets. But seasonality tells us that uh, there might be some bumps in the road. I'm going to throw it back to you. You want to explain the math and the probabilities to everybody? Yeah, why don't we just dive into some seasonality charts here? So, you know, obviously November was very bullish and seasonality has November as being very bullish in November it's been a little abnormal because there's been no pullback at all uh, we haven't touched the nine EMA for about 30 days now which is not a normal market normal markets have a lot more two-way action so there's been this just very high and tight in terms of this move and the problem with that is you know it's fine if we're in a quantitative easing environment when the Fed's printing obviously because there's no reason to look for a pullback because there's a lot of money coming in uh, but when we're getting more of a short squeeze type uh, move this stuff you know every time we've gotten it and it, it's happened a lot in the, the last couple of Augusts, we've had that move. And there was one also, uh, it was a very squeezy move going into, I can't remember which month it was, but it was in 2022. And they all just end up pulling back really hard. So we do, if we're going to get seasonally, if we're going to get a pullback, it's going to occur before the middle of December. Everybody thinks that you just, I think there's a common misconception about this rally that we get into um, the new year. And, and if it does follow through typically, but there is a window where we have, you know, a, a pullback. And so let's look at some of the data that you found. And so this is basically this chart here up is just kind of the big picture. Most of the year has followed this seasonality quite well. But because of where we are, because we've not had a, any kind of even remotely decent pullback on this move. I uh, want to be a little bit careful ahead of going into the middle of December. And that's where the, your chart comes in here with the daily returns. Yeah. And um, if you look at it, you know, the first of the month was was up and we were up and then it gets choppy. And actually, um, towards the middle of week next week, I was telling people in the room on Friday, I said, just remember that, that you know, our, our normal way of thinking of if Friday's up Monday, you usually get a follow through. I think we're going to get that. I think we're going to see weakness starting coming in on Tuesday. And that weakness should prevail into the middle of next week. And then from there, the 15th on, you might as well just buy an S&P 500 or a SPY call for um, the week after uh, after Christmas and just sit on your hands and just don't try to overthink it. Right. Yeah. It, this is There's a reason for this, too, in which in a way in which the probabilities work. Look, everything got stolen from the, the short side in November because of the um, anticipation that the Fed is going to weaken. And on Friday, he didn't give any really reason for people to think that they're not going to lower rates. So they front ran a lot of energy right now. So I don't know how strong these moves are going to be. But if you believe the flows that are sitting underneath the table, here is that it could get pretty wild going into the first week or two of, of January. So we have no reason to think that this market's going to blow up anytime soon. We did show you yesterday, though, that there might be some issues coming underneath the hood because oil starting to fall. And then we have another issue too, Phil. Do you want to explain something for people here? Because JP Morgan has a lot of influence on the market. It's going to be really interesting to see how they're going to square the circle between where they are in this collar and what the market says should happen. Yeah, so there's this collar. And basically, as long as the market stays under that top strike, which you can see every quarter here where they've had their strike. So they typically have three strikes in play. Uh, currently, the one that for this quarter in play, the top strikes at 45.15 on the SPX, the middle strike is at 40.55. And the bottom strikes really low, like I think it's down at like 3,800 or something like that. It's out of play. Where this matters is that we're trading over the top of their upper strike, which is a sold call, I believe. And so what ends up happening is if they don't get, if the market doesn't close under that at the end of the day on December 31st or the last trading day of the, of the year, they're going to lose a lot of money. <laughs> and they typically will roll this to the next quarter, but they want that to expire good. And if you notice more often than not, now it didn't work out for them in Q2. Uh, the market ended up 
closing over the top strike there if you look at the second to the last column and then but the rest of them as we are over the top strike invariably it makes its way down and it, that's what we were talking about earlier where we have these large squeezes higher and then they get this really quick swift drop and it comes where you don't expect it to like you know everything looks like oh it, like you know there's a pullback and then it bounces and you're thinking oh we're just going to go higher and then it just whoosh it pulls out from under you and we're in another situation like that as well so Hey guys, we got Black Friday specials. They're really cool. We have the best pricing for the year. You can get our basic package, our advanced packages, our VIP rooms, software, trade options, trade crypto, trade the futures. With us, get our indicators, best prices of the year. Take advantage of it. Thanks for listening. Even if we don't get under the collar, very high likelihood you're going to get a pullback to at least 45, 15. That would be best case scenario. Okay. So there's not a lot of risk reward uh, to the upside here in terms of, you know, profit potential versus loss potential. Now, this is where it, December gets weird and where I think the narrative is is confusing for a lot of people. We could get a pullback a deeper than 45.15, well under it, and then we rally up in the last week of the month, right? That those last few days of December where it's really the strongest into January. So we could start from maybe under 4,500. We start pushing back up higher. We still end up under that top strike, meaning that we end the month under 4,515. But as we were doing that coming from a lower point, you know, it feels like we had a pretty strong rally to close the year off. But it's not, I think what most people are thinking here, Bob, is we're, we could potentially be shooting towards 4,700. And the odds of that, given that there just really hasn't been a pullback, I think the odds are favoring a pullback under 4,515 and and probably lower, then we get a push up into the end of the year. And then maybe we do push higher, but it won't be until the first or second week of January, where then I'm looking for this entire move to kind of cool its jets. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And when we see those red marks on those uh, five day returns, those are meaningful, you know, those are tradable. And so just keep an eye on that going into the middle of next week. You know, that's the average five day return as of that day. So the weakness is already going to start coming in early this week, coming and it's going to stay with us until the middle to the end of the following week. And remember, technically next week is week two of the option calendar. So, and those are typically bearish weeks. Right. Hey, but Phil, before we um, jump off this topic, we had some questions on our in our podcast that I thought I may share because I think it's a really cool trade. As you know, I trade TLT and I, I sell calls against it, but there's also a, a TLTW that has a buy right component already built into it, which means that they have an automatic made it program, obviously probably computerized, that is looking to maintain a certain level of sold call activity against their position. And they've been pumping out about a 12% annualized dividend. And all you need to do is buy the TLTW and it'll adjust price based on what TLT is doing, but the dividend is fairly consistent. And plus you get the dividend from owning the stock, but that's baked into the dividend that they share with you. So why you want to do that is if number one, if like I have an account where I'm not allowed to have options at all. It's a set plan. I'm in all kinds of issues with, with Schwab and getting it approved. And I said, well, screw it. Uh, I love dividends. It's an IRA. It's a, you know, it's a tax deferred product. And I just have TLTW in there and it's generating dividends for me because I can't write against it. That's number one. Number two, some people are really afraid to do it. And so it just does it for you. S&P also has one too. If people want to buy the, the SPY buy right, there's one for SPY too. It's good for people that want to generate more income. And the other thing too, if you're in a taxable account, you know, instead of getting, taking short-term gains at a higher tax rate, you can be taxed on the lower dividend gains. And those can, those gains can be all the way down to 15%, depending on whether it's considered a qualified dividend or not. That's based on your holding period. So I want to share that with everybody, Phil. TLTW is great. And then you just type in buy right spy uh, or S&P in Google, and they'll give you the symbol for that. You know, And those are kind of some lazy ways of trading, but generates dividends for you without you having to go ahead and write them yourself. And yeah, and that's it. So we, we want to cover anything else, Phil? Oh, you know, one thing I also want to cover, Phil, if you don't mind, is that the gold seasonality looks a lot like SPY too. So, and then the gold seasonality actually pushes, and silver as well, pushes into January. So I think we're seeing a lot of front running of that too in November because we've been getting good moves on the gold miners and silver miners. We may get a pullback here in gold and silver and their miners in the next week or two, just like SPY. Don't be discouraged. The end of the middle of the month to the end of January, are seasonally strong for both the metals. So I think you're in good shape there. You just, you know, just keep an eye on your stops and make sure you, uh, you know, you're managing your sizing. And, and I think you'll enjoy the metals going in, into next year. 
All right, guys, well, let us know what you think. Uh, you think we're going to pull back into the middle of December and then pump, or are we just going to pump right through? Let us know your thoughts below. As always, uh, head over to tradegenius.co and check out our specials there. We'd love to see you guys in the room. Thank you, Bob. Thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Take care. Trade Genius.